Good morning, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is October 27th, 2020, and we're doing a live stream open discussion on investing and personal finance. And um, there was a request to sort of try to focus this more on the entrepreneurial side, starting your own business and whatnot. But we'll see where the discussion takes us and we've done a few of these in the past we've got a personal finance playlist on youtube we've got a lot of videos loaded up on bitshoot uh, we've got uh, cryptocurrency playlist we've got an economics politics playlist and we've done a fair bit of videos on what it means to become financially independent and we're just going to continue the conversation we've had over the last uh, few years regarding that topic aside from that uh, while notifications go out on discord and on twitch let me tell you what this is all about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o elder god how are you doing good afternoon to you i am on patreon and if you want to follow this work if you want to know what this work is about patreon is a fantastic way to do to do so i have sort of a thesis laid out there and everything's layered on mathematics i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike okay you can follow the work there and after a while if you enjoy the content if you see what you would like and if you do have the means supporting this work through patreon is a fantastic way to make sure we continue to do what it is that we are doing which is coming on to about 15 years of producing content lots of articles almost a thousand videos and a lot more to go yet a lot more to go yet h6 ld 3n holden three early did you draw? i don't know how to pronounce that welcome to another live stream for those of you who are supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for your support it is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this okay so very much appreciate it we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o holden but you can say anything really okay holden we have a holden who uh, who, uh who's holding who's here as well so evening chicho is much better evening evening it is to you elder god uh we are live streaming on twitch if you want to participate in the chat twitch is where you want to be at and for those of you who've been following subscribing cheering uh coming on to the live streams participating uh sharing your ideas challenging some of our ideas and the mods thank you for taking care of business gang thank you for the support Mund, how are you doing? Elim, Eller, Eller, Mund, Mund, how are you doing? <laughs> Void hook, yo, let's go. Danite, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well, brother. I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on LO Minds, VK Parlor Gap, and Twitter. You can follow the work there, and all the links will be in the description of the video. And if you go to Twitch in the chat, anytime irrelevant if we're live streaming or not if you type in exclamation mark social a whole bunch of links will pop up that should provide you all the links to these social networks as well as our discord page where we're fairly active there's a few people that are fairly active on there me included and some of the mods and some of the people sharing everything and anything right which is fantastic it's become sort of our own little forum uh, to share information without censorship awesome hello cheryl how are you doing lechalon how are you doing long time hey chicho after years finally i made it to a live stream awesome i think you've been here before on live stream or is it your username same username on youtube i recognize your name maybe it's um it's similar to someone else's knights of old comic hello hello did you ever play dnd when i was young elementary school i played and then when i went to high school i changed areas where i was at I sort of I went to uh, a private school that was out in the next town nearby. It took me an hour by bus to go there every day. Two hours of busing every day. Uh, I lost my D and D uh, crowd, I, so I didn't get back into it. D and D, you need the core group. 
see death for 20 hello hello you chicho and all great lasagna how are you doing hello how are you doing today doing fantastic man thank you very much made some pancakes this morning ate some pancakes this morning i had to be done man lonely piggy hello hello how are you doing brother any snacks i got a snacks today i got um munching on autumn olives we got autumn olives to last us for another couple of weeks okay and they're really good come on focus oh, oh, there it is look at those autumn olives really they're beautiful right look at that like what a unique fruit right and it's uh it's got tons of nutrients from what i understand what cheryl posted on and i've heard this before they're actually invasive species in some parts so for some reason uh while they're invasive i don't know how many people actually harvest the fruit and by the way uh, cheryl just so you know i talked with my mom i gave her three buckets she turned one bucket into a jam and she didn't take the seeds out and she says it was amazing i haven't tasted it because she's in a different town than i am but next time i visit her i'm gonna she's gonna save me some i'm gonna taste it and this these autumn olives because before i said i've tried making jams with autumn olives before but there's two different autumn olive trees that we have in our area i tried making jam with the other autumn olives and they're a little different than these ones so i've never tried making jam with these autumn olives i still have some left so i might try it out just a little bit just to see what it's like uh, if if it's good autumn olives should still be there maybe they're getting towards the end i might do a run and go grab some and that's part of investing gang make your own food forage harvest grow food become have food security right thing bobber hey chicho your discord is actually dope you're also open to ideas for it and building it more for sure ding bobber for sure morning hall spider-man how are you doing x how's life glad i finally caught alive awesome glad to have you Sai finn welcome welcome do that evening all evening evening good morning anakin hello hello new zealand is under your kale rule new zealand is going crazy they got COVID camps canada's building them too not a good idea manslayer hello hello manslayer rudy welcome welcome skelelog cornflakes skelex cornflakes hey chicho hope all is well doing well cheryl lots of love nights of welcome chicho i had a similar uh length by stride lots of aa for my walkman and iron man yeah <laughs> lots <laughs> lots of double a batteries gang imperial dog that's before mp3 players right you had your little walkmans going on what up chicho love your content finally caught a stream imperial dog welcome welcome i'm glad you're liking the content love sharing the information right and just just sharing period i can't wait to hear how it works I, maybe i'll try cheryl if not this year for sure next year uh ning bobber before i get into the whole uh thing we are recording the audio for this on a lapel mic okay so for live streams where we're doing these open discussions where there is no visuals involved uh, other than me sitting here going da -da 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 -da. the audio will be uploaded to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o as podcast and it should be available uh, on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this video to bit shoot 100 and to youtube as well we'll keep the discussion the topics where youtube is censoring uh channels nuking channels uh demoting people deleting videos and stuff we'll keep those to those topics off the table for now because i think the personal finance stuff is pretty important to share as widely as possible so is the other stuff but uh, i like making the separation and as the command says in our chat let's keep politics on the politics uh folder gang and if i'm guilty of exposing you know instigating that let me know we'll pull back on the 
on the throttle right and if you want to support this work on those platforms uh subscribing turning on notifications sharing liking and if you're on youtube joining youtube membership is a fantastic way to support this project and for those of you who've been supporting this work through youtube membership thank you very much for your support gang welcome i'm going to take these guys down Ding bobber, uh, Chicho, any advice? Here's the situation. I signed a contract for what I thought was three months at a scammy gym like four years ago. Oh, I went through some stuff. I forgot about it. Two years later, they billed me $2,700. And the other day, I found them in my business bureau and I have worse credits. Oh, man, what do I do? I still owe them $2,700. Other people might give you advice as well. Hopefully they will. There's two things I would do, right? Or two things you could do. And take this with a gigantic grain of salt, right? First thing you could do, if you don't care about your credit score, tell them to F off, right? Uh, go on, go online and tell them that start writing bad reviews and don't lie, don't harass them. Just make it known that you you consider this gym to to be unreasonable or whatnot you could you don't need to take it that far you can just tell them to f off and walk away and your credit rating will go down right that'll be on your thing that they own and then they'll sell you this this debt to someone else that'll call you up saying they need the money they would have bought your two thousand seven hundred dollars for uh thirteen hundred uh, fifty dollars for fifty fifty cents on the dollar not even that right twenty cents on the dollar and then they'll try to collect and if they can't collect they'll sell it to a lower tier collection agency you know and go through this thing someone that buys it pennies on the dollar they'll try to keep on calling you after seven years they can go piss off right the other thing is you can call up and say look man you guys are pulling a scam here now i'm willing to pay a little fine for my stupidity and ding bobber you can call it you can call it a mistake you can call it ignorance you can call it whatever it is i've done stupid stuff like this i like to refer to it as stupidity because it's a good way if you make a mistake in your businesses right in your financial decisions start calling it a stupid mistake right that sinks in better than saying they scam me right call it what a dumbass mistake you made right never sign a contract with a gym never sign a. by the way gang one bit of advice take with a grain of salt if you want mm -hmm. when people give you things to sign say you know what i don't really sign things what is this get them to explain it never sign on the spot take whatever it is they want you to sign walk away with it sit on it for a long time right if they contact you and say hey we need that signature then if you really want to continue doing business with them or doing whatever it is with them hire someone get them to read that thing because legal lingo is different than casual lingo it's it's all about definitions vocabularies language right pay someone to read it okay if you're not satisfied with their answer pay someone else to read it right look online do your research before you sign anything and preferably stop giving away your signature when you're younger you get into all these cons sign a lot as you get older you sign less things and personally i don't i i haven't signed the last thing i signed i think was five six years ago where we signed the lease like rental place that we're renting i think that was the last thing i signed okay so those are your two bits you can make a deal with them probably call them up and say hey listen da -da 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 -da. if you want to take it really far go stand outside the gym with a sign saying these guys ripped me off right and by the way i'm telling you this because i've i've pushed corporations to the limit i took the ceo of impark one of the largest if not the largest 
parking company that has a stock on the stock market their headquarters in vancouver in canada i took the ceo of the company the canadian office which, which i think was a president of all of canada i took them to court i had the guy on the stand for three hours two or three hours questioning him right i cost them tens of thousands of dollars me representing myself against two of their lawyers and their ceo and stuff like this because they pissed me off so it really depends what you want to do will i do that again i doubt it i had time on my hands i wanted to know how the legal system worked i wanted to know how far these people would take it i went to court i sued them for ten thousand dollars right and it's a long story i think i've shared it once and then i lost right the judge everyone knew i was in the right and they're in the wrong everybody knows this that corporation is in the wrong the people who are there scamming are in the right we walked out of the court the ceo was pissed like really so damn pissed right they're like blah 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 i, I turned to him i looked at him i said listen man you see what just happened that's just me solo if i get one more phone call from you guys if i get one more and i did this for like a 450 dollars thing they wanted from me i said if i get one more letter from you guys one more phone call from you guys i'm gonna take a full page ad in the two main newspapers in vancouver saying i'm gonna file a class action lawsuit against you guys who's been scammed by them the way i have let's file a class action lawsuit i go one more right the guy looked at me i go i ain't effing man one more i dare you right never heard from him again wiped clean the debt right do you really want to take it that far i don't advise it only if you're really pissed i am now taking two days off a, off a week to secure an extra 14 hours to help my team's financial difficult awesome other god fantastic gang i'm gonna scroll down uh, to see if there's anything that says she show on it because i'm assuming there's you know i go off on rants and uh, i miss a lot of uh i don't keep up with the chat uh so if i see chicho if anything directed towards me let me know go at chicho that way it stands out um and i hope you guys are having a great conversation between each other if you're talking among each other and advising and whatnot right hi chicho this is the first stream i've caught live awesome jay zalmas 2000 welcome welcome El Fida. hey chicho greetings from the netherlands love your content awesome salutations to the netherlands i've been to amsterdam spent a few days there it was a lot of fun uh i it was crazy though uh, coolio i don't keep up with bitcoin too much but i hear it's a huge highs lately it's thirteen thousand plus right now uh also hi chicho in chat i'll be drifting in and out since i i'm at work but hope you are all well you too coolio you too lechelon chicho what's your thoughts on fiat currency and changing it back to gold standard do you think that will go back to the goals i don't think we're going to go back to the gold standard I know a lot of people want us to go back to the gold standard i don't think we're going to go back to the gold standard there's uh people doing yard work outside they do the blow thing so apologies about the sound gang uh i don't think we're going to go back to the gold standard okay uh, i i don't think it's it's viable it's feasible i don't think environmentally it's sound because basically what's going to happen with the gold standard and those people who want us to go back to a gold standard don't understand the econo uh, environmental aspects of gold mining right so the value of gold let's say keeps on going up because if fiat currency is going to go to the gold standard value of gold should be a lot higher than what it is everybody knows that right so gold should be like at twelve thousand, not at two thousand right so because it's being suppressed and more manipulation and stuff like this but if price of gold continues to go up right then that means economically it's going to be feasible for companies to to go after uh, deposits that aren't very rich right so if it, let's say let's say gold goes up take it to a limit gold goes up to a million dollars right an ounce they they'll be willing to take down a down down mountains not that they're not right now they're taking down mountains right now but just imagine what they would be willing to take down right to harvest that little teensy meansy little particles of gold that is is distribution is so minute right 
going back to a gold standard environmentally would be a disaster for humanity okay aside from that i don't think it's going to happen there, there are other things that are taking place right now don't take that's only if you're actually 100 percent in the right otherwise they can uh, collect through court they no company is going to take you to court for two thousand seven hundred dollars uh, I, I don't think so right yeah it was dumb my friend uh ding Bobber says convinced me he signed one and didn't get screwed so bad wow uh, there's a saying that says it's better to have intelligent enemies than stupid friends because stupid friends will get you in trouble uh, while intelligent enemies will only confront you if they have something to gain and if you're intelligent you'll know the game at play it's stupid friends that will get you in trouble stupid family more so okay dude that guy would probably have me kill <laughs> thing Bobber says uh, da, da, da. okay i'm scrolling down chicho chicho takes things into his own bloody hand i i sometimes it's it, like a bulldog if i get my teeth into something i try not to let go unless i'm satisfied or if i'm about to be taken out oh my god <laughs> i don't know i don't advise it i don't advise it bannon stain how are you doing hey chicho working on my assignment for newton's laws of motion nice nice how's everything going going a while and newton's laws awesome fun fun nice walk on with chicho i pay to watch that court case man i learned a lot doing that right i once redecorated someone's car <laughs> who was scamming my sister <laughs> Thanks for the advice, uh, uh, Elder God and Chicho Ding Bomber says. Fix or it didn't happen. Ha uh ha. -huh. To Elder God about the car. Hilarious. Good afternoon, Chicho Intrepid. How are you doing? How's things on the, uh, on this fine day? Doing well, man. Thank you very much. Had pancakes this morning, so I'm all happy. Too hopeless too. Chicho, I like the advice that I heard from Tony Robbins about investing a minimum of 10% of monthly income and 20% if possible. The worst way to earn money is trading your time for money. Investing and compounding is the path to real wealth. In, yeah, like... If you want to, in this economic system, if you want to acquire material wealth, and let's call it because there's different types of wealth. There's there are people who are very poor, but they're healthy. They have amazing family, friends, community. They have a place to live. They grow their own food. So wealth comes in multiple ways. First of all, Tony Robbins is a scam artist. I he, he, like he, he gives good advice some of it but this advice isn't really tony robbins advice this advice is general advice in our current economic system if you want to become financially independent you need to invest in something because fiat currencies their value decrease right for me as you know i invest in collectibles and collectibles are an amazing place to park your money right my main collectibles is comic books right so you you can invest in any uh, tangible objects or cryptos or stock market if you want or whatever you want right uh but as i said before the be there's like we put out a video on personal finance invest in your health i don't care how much money you have if your health deteriorates okay all the money in the world is not going to do you make you happy right it's not going to buy you life it's not going to buy you freedom it's not going to relieve you of pain right not on a serious level right so the best place to invest is your health your mental physical spiritual health your family's health your friends health your community's health in your vicinity if you have extra money left over 100 percent you should be investing a little bit wherever you feel comfortable right and as you said it says investing so if you want to put money in the stock market take a little bit of money average over time right buy into stocks if you want to invest in collectibles comic books sure follow a certain genre and start accumulating some assets right if you want to invest in crypto start accumulating average averaging up or down over time right so 
you do need to invest if you want to become financially independent in this economic system and that's general advice that's been around for a very very long time greetings and salutations to all greetings gina how are you doing by the way regarding tony robbins uh, you know when i uh, the thing that made me just totally tune this guy off I remember watching a lecture of his and you know he comes on he's a really big guy and there's people clapping pa 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 he first of all the first thing I ever saw him that really turned me off with his videos with him with yachts and mansions and a lot of beautiful girls and stuff I was like man what a what I just didn't like that right that's not what I was going for and I don't give a rat's ass about what he was showing wealth to be right so again when you're taking advice take take with grain of salt and keep in mind who you're taking advice from if you're looking to acquire yachts take advice from tony robbins i guess don't take advice from chicho but one of the things tony robbins said was this on doing this lecture thing right he came out and he starts talking and starts talking and then at some point i think 10 minutes in he goes you know you should do multiple things in life like why would you spend your time to watch a movie again there are so many amazing movies out there why would you waste your time to ever re-watch a movie i was like dude what an idiot there's movies that i've watched like 10 times because they're absolutely amazing that statement that tony robbins says why would you ever watch a movie again it's like saying why would you ever have sex again if you've had it one great time or why would you ever go for a walk down this amazing beautiful trail that is meandering through the mountains with waterfalls and beautiful scented fly why would you ever go down path down down that path again because there's endless paths you could go down walking explore new places right it just didn't it, his his logic is flawed because he's selling himself right he's selling his pretend wisdom i don't know what it is I have dumped all my stupid friends 2020 has been a house cleaning year yeah and by the way gang what elder got saying clean house every now and then right man i stay in yeah having a blast working on mechanic physics greetings from norway greetings norway how are you doing must be getting cold there now just like canada okay interesting uh Lechalon says, I see a lot of investors who are against the fiat currency investing in gold like crazy. They say fiat will fail and we will go back to the gold. I wanted a different viewpoint. Yeah, it, it's not a bad idea to acquire some physical gold or physical silver. Uh, the mining companies, like take a look at Kinross. It's been a five banger over the last like three years. Uh, like Kinross dropped down, their stock dropped down to uh, I think like $2. And it's sitting at uh, Canadian anyway, and it's sitting at uh, or U.S. Canadian. It's sitting at ten dollars, eleven dollars right now. So it was a five banger. It was a great place to be five years ago, right? It, it might have room to grow grow a lot higher, but it's not going to be a five banger. I have a lot of wealth. I'm happy. The best kind of wealth, in exactly crafter, right? Happy, healthy, have family have friends have people you can communicate with have books you can read acquire things that you love right knights of old comic chicho my friend put faces under the car door handles of one of his uh intelligent enemies what <laughs> faces oh feces i saw faces feces well if he did then he's looking to start a war which isn't the best idea i hope he did it for good reasons under the door handles of one of his intelligent enemies man i hope that intelligent enemy doesn't decide to uh escalate the situation baron tolie hello hello welcome to another live stream chicho can you go over how you started your business and if you had any failed ones for sure i've had failed ones my comic book publishing uh company was a financially was a disaster for me okay experiment wise what i learned by starting it was amazing right i don't understand leaf blowers really leaf blowers don't make sense to me yeah it leaf like right now in canada the canadian government put out a man not a mandate but a recommendation for people not to rake their the 
dead leaves because it's fall that fall on the ground because that becomes food to the soil right there are animals species that live that thrive under fallen leaves right so people have to be told listen let the leaves be meanwhile you have people walking around with leaf blowers and these leaf blowers they're i, I think they're two stroke engines right so they pollute a lot right so it's just ridiculous right i've had failed ones anakin just to let you know sorry about the leaf blower gang it is fall i'll let me read some comments we'll li listen to the leaf blower and i'll address some of your things loud loud i have watched the usual suspects 113 times at least oh 113 times <laughs> Coolio, sounds to me Tony is more concerned about experience uh, accumulation rather than experience enjoyment. Aha, well said, Coolio, possibly. Or even learning from your experiences, right? Some movies you have to watch multiple times to get the deep meaning behind them, right? Stan, yeah, it's really, really cold. Haha, -ha. in Norway, snowed yesterday, yikes. So boots on and winter jacket. Uh, it hasn't snowed where I am right now. Elder God, cryptocurrency. Should I invest 10k? It depends how much, uh, what the total of your total liquid cash that 10k is. Elder God, if your liquid cash is 10k, I would not take take 10k and put it into cryptos. If your li liquid cash is 10k, and you want to roll the dice and let that let it sit, or you want to start trading, take 10%, take a k and throw it in there, right? if you guys aren't liquid and you're going to go all in into whatever investment might be that's a bad idea i don't care what that investment is okay don't go all in i personally don't believe in crypto most of the people either don't use it or they don't know what it is which i'm most of which in most of the cases is just another casino type of commodity uh to a certain degree it's become that way what's happening right now is it's a it, it started off should have been cryptocurrency right currency meaning people using it to buy and sell things right but wall street got their hands on it and it's no longer a currency right not the way it was designed to be it's more of a trading instrument and an asset that people are holding holding so right now big players are going in there and putting cryptocurrencies or bitcoin on their balance sheets right so just are hoarding it okay so it's like hoarding a, a, a collectible really because that's what bitcoin is it's limited right so it's become a collectible so people are ho ho hoarding a digital collectible right it has its uses but it's not being used for its initial design right so it's become a collectible digital collectible and at some point right and at some point and i and i agree with uh, certain uh, certain economists that have come out and said at some point like if people think uh centralized governments are going to allow a currency to take over the their economies people are out of their minds right because at some point they might come out and say okay holding bitcoin is now illegal they'll confiscate the bitcoins now for individuals that have cryptocurrencies that they haven't declared it and they're doing business in cryptos and stuff like this that doesn't matter right so they can say i mean they could bring out punishment say if you hold it we can seize your assets we can do this and most people will let it go right but some people will hold on to it right however those institutions that are buying up bitcoin and putting it on their balance sheets if the governments come out and say bitcoin is now illegal then all those institutions will have to dump their bitcoin right now a lot of the push of bitcoin going up has to do with some in some of these institutions and stuff like this buying these things as an asset as basically crypto gold 
right a collectible a rarity a commodity and putting it on their balance sheets this is the absurdity of this whole system right what happens if tomorrow united states comes out and says we're seizing all cryptos okay all bitcoin and it's illegal now what's going to happen there's going to be tons of crypto dumped on the market right shut up leaf man elder god says i like the soothing sound people you you, th you think it's soothing <laughs> hopeless you like how they sound no way gang i never knew this leaf litter is an awesome ecosystem it's an awesome ecosystem cheryl i talk to people about this and they're like oh it's dangerous it's this it's i'm like it's it, it's dirty it, it, it it's i'm like man you guys are crazy i find it soothing it's not loud on our end it's not loud on your end oh okay good 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 it's much louder on my end yeah burning that oil gas mix is really nasty it's really nasty uh, gina and they are two stroke i believe tyson how are you doing neuro blossom hey chicho hello my friend what's your number one unique learning from your comic book publishing company uh don't try to do everything yourself right but there's a few really so first of all don't try to do everything yourself second of all no matter how much you think balance out you need add a multiplier to it so if you need if you think you need fifty thousand dollars to get this business off the ground minimum multiplied by two let's say you make sure you have access to a hundred thousand dollars right if you need five thousand dollars to get this business off the ground multiply by three give yourself if it's lower give yourself a bigger multiple if it's higher give yourself a lower multiple but whatever you figure out that you need to get your business off the ground add a multi or have a multiplier on it right have access to cash and have a source of revenue coming in for me i've always done multiple things right i've i've sort of been decentralized my whole life i don't know why i did this i just did right it's just i grew up in a in a household where it was um uh what do you call it uh it was a construction household where uh, we had our own companies and stuff like this so i just decentralized from the get-go so i had certain revenue streams coming in here 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 so if one failed i wasn't left into the, in the streets right i still have certain my revenue coming in that being said i put a lot of money into comic books uh publishing <laughs> bad timing my on my part distributor wars collapsing um market even marvel comics declared bankruptcy right so what's chicho's company going to do mermaid publications nate what up chicho been missing the live streams but enjoying the salvia readings awesome nate glad you're liking it's about nine percent yeah elder god uh, possibly like uh, we're talking about bitcoin it, the government is not going to come out tomorrow and say illegal right there's institutions going in there it's sitting at thirteen thousand dollars right now right keep an eye on it if it doubles goes to 26 i would pull half you'd pull your original stake out and if you don't need the rest of it let it ride right until politically things change or whatnot uh, I don't know I, I i don't hold crypto so uh but we do have a cryptocurrency playlist by the way i love your blog chicho about the current economic situation that you published i believe 2014 recommended to every awesome awesome let it yeah it's a long game they play right coolio chicho what is the best way in your opinion to learn financial literacy in my experience public schools are very bad at teaching it do you think it's better to learn by investing little amounts or researching through websites and whatnot by doing both right get your hands dirty like for example there's a rule in in gambling right and i've i've gambled i've gone through i've held i've held poker games in my house and i had two tables going at one for a period of time and stuff like this there's there's a saying in poker that says you don't the only way to learn poker is to play poker with money 
right? You have to play. You can read all the rules you want, all the rules you want, right? But until you sit down at a poker table and play with real money against real people, you don't know what the game of poker is. And it will take time for you to learn it, right? It's like all of these academics that come on and say how the markets should function. But a lot of these academics have never really been in the open market. They're academics, right? The people you should listen to are traders, people who have started their own businesses, who do active trading, who do uh, import export business. Those are the people that know how the economy works, not academics, right? So the best way to really learn financial literacy is to risk a certain amount of your assets into starting something and doing research at the same time and and, and it stands gang don't go all in don't go all in right and definitely don't go all in at the beginning of the game right it's a long game you want to play knights of old Chicho. in 1980 my father took me to empire strikes backs in the theater over 10 times we don't regret a single viewing yeah i bet it'd be amazing right right Mul move watching movies multiple times is one of the greatest joys in the world right and tv series i've watched cowboy peep up now the whole series i don't know at least five times Samurai Champloo, 50, uh, not Samurai Champloo, Samurai Champloo 2, I've watched at least four or five times. But Samurai Jack, 52 episodes of Fam Samurai Jack. I watched them and then I went back to the beginning and watched it again. <laughs> no break, didn't watch anything else. It was that brilliant, right? Bar Bartolonia, Bar Bartol Bartoliani, Bartoliani. Please, gang, don't get me wrong. I love. Uh, blockchain technology and it's a big thing for sh for our future i am just annoyed by this crypto market yes cryptocurrencies might be decentralized but the way they sell it is heavily centralized 100 percent agree with you fees limits and tons of trash currencies uh bartoloni i agree with you blockchain technology legitimate technology is going to see us into the future if it's done right right the cryptocurrency market it's it's controlled by central uh like most of the cryptos are in the hands of very few people they can manipulate the market as they wish right you got wall street coming in in like institutional investors coming in because they're searching for any type of return right now right they're searching for yield yield is more dividends coming in but they're searching for growth anything so they went through the real estate market. The real estate market is crashing for the most part, right? Commercial real estate, some residential and farmland stuff is doing well because they're outside of central institutions, right? Central centers, the centers uh, where the populace is, right? So they've gone through the real estate. They've gone through. Uh, they're going through. They go through different, different fields, right? Right now, they're hitting up the cryptos. I put on an article. Uh, a while ago as soon as wall street got in I, I sort of said you know what i'm out because i'm not here to support wall street what was it a financially good idea to pull out no not really right because bitcoin has gone up a lot since i pulled out right but I, i'm not interested in supporting wall street and their scam best memory ever luke oh i won't say luke oh everybody's must have seen it luke I am your father. Luke. I can't even do a Darth Vader voice. That makes sense, Blossom says. Eagles and cycling. Hello, hello. Hi, Chicho. What are your thoughts, opinions on selling products online as a business? Great idea, such as Amazon or, or others. I have a friend who has done extremely well in this field. Yeah, 100%. Collectibles, you can buy things in bulk and sell them. Like, for example, I just I, I got comic book hauls coming by the way. I bought some comic books from this one seller. Okay, I just paid for it yesterday, and he's sending it out to me. So probably in uh, I'll get him in a couple of weeks or something like this, right? But basically, the guy bought a storage container, 
right? Or someplace that was storage. It was full of, he said, like 500 boxes of books and comic books, right? So this is a legitimate market to be in. It's a legitimate business model. Auto wreckers, this is a business model that has been around for a gazillion years, right? Or as long as cars have been around and other things have been around. They buy things in bulk, break them up, and sell them in parts and make more than buying the thing in bulk uh, companies do this right where they go buy a company in wall street they do this is predatory taking over a company they go into a company buy it out start siphoning out money from the company's savings and retirements and all this jazz right screw over the workers start selling off the assets and disband the company so let's say they buy a company for 10 million dollars break it all up siphon out the money sell shares to dumbass investors that think that these people are there to save the company and then they raise capital and then they bankrupt that company and they you know they bought it for 10 million they pull out 40 million they're done right it's a legitimate business model it's the, it's the way our economic system works right and 100 percent, you can do this with collectibles or essentials right you can buy things and sell them online why not diversify all right actually i have i have been on the dw a lot recently they call crypto as a favorite uh, favorite payment really they like and paypal just uh, allowed i believe bitcoin uh, transactions to be on there right so it is legit it is legit okay so it's becoming more affordable to do to buy and sell things with crypto to a certain degree it's it's going into the mainstream so is it going to go up most likely all right most likely how high could go a lot higher but it could go to zero overnight as well so don't go all in but if i had a lot of extra cash around i might park some in there hey chicho it's been quite a minute uh, quite a minute how's how quite quite a minute how's the thing going lions how are you doing welcome welcome ireland coolio wall street is the main reason i i no longer support or invest in the stock market yeah max decker how are you doing hey chicho and chat how is everybody doing today how is everybody doing gang i'm scrolling down oh i'm also to the bottom right on right on speaking of selling online i resell sneakers i buy for retail and sell at a higher price based of a set supply and demand market yeah alliance 100 i used to go there's a magazine called ad busters and that is based in vancouver right and it hit the scene in the late 1990s and it's political and stuff like this they were based in vancouver and just as a hobby uh, they were they were on seventh uh, downtown vancouver right seventh street or something there there was a period for like two or three months i was going to their uh, offices and they had their ad busters magazines uh, that you could buy just sitting there for like two dollars each or something right and at the time some of their magazines were selling it for a fair bit so i would buy like 20 of them and then go list them on ebay so i, I bought them for either two dollars or five dollars and it was selling them between 15 to 30 dollars right after 9 11 there was some stuff they put in 9 11 was an interesting period there was some stuff uh, they were publishing that uh, culturally they were important right and people were willing to pay a premium price for it so you know i would go buy their magazines and sell them on ebay it's a legitimate thing to do and you learn about uh it, it, and it's more educational in a big way right you you learn about trade commerce money management speculation you learn the the technicals of how to list things online sell things online the pitfalls how to ship you learn a lot by doing you learn a lot by doing drainage drainage <laughs> elder god awesome for the record i'm not buying anything illegal awesome elder god good 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 line is quite well surprisingly profitable as long as you know why sh uh, what shoes to go after yeah fragment jordan 3 dropping tomorrow 
buy for 200 pounds sell for 450 to 500 pounds serious or euros sorry not pounds your ireland yeah yeah euros that's the euro symbol so uh fragment jordan 3 so these are collectibles right the collectible market is hot and it's legitimate right i don't know if i would invest in jordans there'll be a market there for for a long time maybe right for me comic i tell people comic books they go you're out of your mind what a waste of money i'm like dude <laughs> like do you guys understand that the collectible market has been around longer than wall street has been around right longer than the stock market has been around collectibles have been a thing for thousands if not ten, tens of thousands of years throughout human history wall street has been around for 150 years and people think wall street is more legit than collectible markets just imagine the brainwashing required for that right <laughs> elder god sent coolio to elder god well that's no fun coolio all right what would you say if the best investment what would you say is the best investment for a thousand dollars usd for a prof profitable return of investment preferably within a time frame of a few months to one to two years okay first of all if you're talking about investment of a thousand dollars in a few months you're not talking investment you're talking gambling okay or in uh what do you call it speculation right and you can have good speculation and bad speculation right so a few months or a few weeks is not investment it's gambling one to two years could be considered investment and it depends coolio it depends what what you're into what you think is going to be good right one thing you could do is take a look at uh follow hollywood see what type of movies they're putting out that are related to comic books find a character do your research go on the forums and stuff like this find not one find two or three characters that are that are going to make an appearance in a blockbuster movie by their first appearances before the movie comes out or right after the movie comes out if you think the movie is going to be really popular sell them that doesn't require that much capital and you learn a lot right or as lions said buy fragment jordan threes you 200 euros uh so you could buy three of them three of them if you're talking about usd thousand bucks so buy three of them and sell them knights of Comet after being laid off so nice of Comet chicho after being laid off from a successful game company they offered to buy back all my stock for 15 dollars i paid two dollars they are a private company advice i'd only be able to sell again if they offer go public or are uh, acquired so what if they don't uh knights of all comics so what if they don't offer to buy it again if you don't work for the company if it's a private company can you still hold the stock in that company is that uh is that uh legit from what i understand you can't do that can you or go public go public for sure they'd be open uh you know what why do you have to sell all of it if you think they're going to go public or get acquired which is very uh, it if it's a small gaming company is successful then a larger company at some point will gobble it up right unless the management is brutal and they're going to run it to the ground so here's one thing gang the choice is not all in or all out you could fragment it right so let's say you have a thousand shares uh knights of old comic if they're offering you 15 dollars a share just say okay i'll sell you 500 i'll sell you half and keep the other half and let it ride you never know right if you don't need the cash that's what i would do personally okay if i need the cash i would go i would say go ahead remember you're gonna have to pay capital gains on that crap too right uh, so you got to take the cat tax implications into consideration if your salary is this much and selling the shares all of a sudden kicks you up to a major tax bracket don't do it because you're not really getting 15 dollars a share now now you're getting nine dollars a share because six dollars that is going to go to tax man right so you have to take those into consideration but my first advice would be can you sell a partial if you want to anakin chicho i bought pokemon packs 
a couple of years ago for $30 and just sold them for 450 each recently. Awesome. Great job, Anakin. Great job. Blossom. Chicho, what's your take on blockchain based digital collectibles? Blockchain? Well, I consider Bitcoin to be a digital collectible. Blockchain based digital collectible. That's what Bitcoin is to me. Right? So it's a legit place to be if if you have extra cash as long as you don't you don't need that liquidity right lions it goes off hype if people in the street wear sneakers community are excited or if it's a collab between two uh, communities then the profit margin is high. basic equation design company plus nike divided by jordan equals hype equals profit <laughs> nike, nike jordan brands instead of com communities yeah crazy right lions but it is what it is right ah i see i see coolio says anyone invested in beth bethasada is going to see their investment go up in value microsoft just recently bought them i don't know what bethasada is knights of welcome chicho yes i have legal documents as ownership the offer is only for all ah yeah they would have put a disclaimer in there it is uh, or little caveat in there all or nothing up to you nice little comic uh like look in your tax bracket first of all is that going to kick you seriously high up into a tax bracket where it's not 15 dollars anymore it's only 750 and is it worth it to you do you need that liquid money uh do you have faith in the company that's going to get bought out going to go public or they'll make an offer again at some point by the way knights of old comic you can make a counter offer if you like right and make sure the company can't uh dilute your shares right bartoloni the best long-term investment is always when you invest in yourself 100 percent agree if you invest in the stock market then your money stays in the casino the question is what is the best investment for you education books community your own business tons of options tons of options and gang what uh bartol bar bartol leone is mentioning here is our first video in our first and second video in our personal finance playlist on youtube this is exactly what I was mentioning that should be in your top five, right? Your health, your education, your family, your community. That's the best investment you could make. You do that, okay? And then if you have excess money that you feel like learning something new, you want to enter a market, do your research, tip your toes in there, right? Try it out. See if you really want to be there. Their video game company that made the fallout and elder scrolls games ah cool but they've been around they're huge elder scrolls is fallout and elder scrolls are huge coolio but Tony, the stock market is not a casino it's not gambling long term the market has averaged about seven percent return after inflation uh a purple uh, crow i disagree with you there right now the stock market is completely uh it, it's the the numbers where it is right now does not reflect the health of the economy it's centralized controlled given corporate bailout trillions of dollars to for companies to buy back their own stocks right it's 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 a disaster most of the stocks in the stock market right now they are they are selling multiples of what they really be price that right now the stock market is a casino okay and keep in mind everything is a cycle you want the stock market let's say well it did here's here's a stock market uh corrected for inflation it, it did this it did this in 1970s and then uh, 1980s whoop, crash 1988 uh, did this 1994 some clintons comes in oh stock market goes up oh, oh crash bubble crash and then oh then the scam of 2000 it will go up boom crash again oh, crash it all depends when you buy in is it a good idea to buy at the peak before a major crash because every peak is broken right is the stock market going to continue to go up sure but is it going to be 
are you buying at a peak that it's going to take you another 15 years 10 years to reach this peak again or is it done i don't know i'd be a trader i wouldn't be a long-term and holder of anything in the in wall street right now lions chicho off topic you've probably already discussed it what's your thoughts on the armenia Azerbaijan conflict if you have any relatives or loved ones in armenia i pray for their safety thanks uh, lions appreciate it and we haven't talked about this we actually i was prepared uh, yesterday we did a politics uh, live stream where I was prepared to talk about Armenia and Azerbaijan. I did my research, I had my stuff, and I, it, it gets my blood boiling a little bit, right? Because it is a complicated situation, but not as complicated as people think it is, right? It's about a people, Armenian, that are very much concerned of being genocided again by the same people that committed genocide on them in world war one right that don't recognize that they committed genocide on them right they want to cleanse an area of or, and they started the war and there's a lot of people at play right so last night during our politics live stream i was going pretty hard because i i was i had really prepared myself for the armenia Azerbaijan discussion but it didn't come up right and since we're doing this uh this is more of a personal finance discussion i rather not go there um but as per your question yes i do have family there okay and yes the situation is really bad there and yes azerbaijan with turkey started this war and they're using isis fighters to try to commit genocide cleanse an area that has been for thousands of years armenian right ethnicity and they want to cleanse the area and get rid of those armenians and bring in their own people right so i'm biased i'm armenian but i can honestly tell you armenia is a democracy the information flowing in of, in and out of armenia is fluid right it's very fluid azerbaijan is a dictatorship turkey is a dictatorship both azerbaijan and turkey do not allow free flow of information in that degree because the education system is completely indoctrination like crazy indoctrination look at uh and and anything you say against the ottoman empire you could get killed in turkey if you want an example look at how a uh, hen hun uh haran think that was a journalist in turkey that was writing about the armenian genocide of uh, uh of world war ii that turks committed genocide on armenians and he was assassinated in turkey and people cheered people in government cheered him the the person that assassinated this journalist assassin he was like a 17 year old kid i think he's still in jail but he was he was being praised by a lot of the politicians in turkey turkey and azerbaijan are in the wrong they started this war thousands of people are dying and they have they're in the mindset of committing genocide on the armenians okay and we can talk about this a lot more because there's a lot of history there and stuff like this uh, but that's the general gist of it and uh azerbaijan has been being armed to the teeth by uh different parties and stuff like this it, it's crazy and isis fighters are there and this is sort of erdogan's uh, lashing out and whatnot but we'll leave it there lions uh, thank you for the concerns by the way thank you for the concerns uh, it's heavy okay coolio i'm currently working with a friend on a non-profit org business plan as well as a youtube channel we'll eventually monetize the youtube channel but that project is more for education and enjoyment first and foremost awesome awesome while collectibles hold their trade value during a period of intense recession okay here's the thing blossom pandemic hit right earlier this year stock market dropped 30 percent right dow jones we'll just mention dow jones and dow jones is not a great indicator of what's going on in the markets because um what is it tesla uh who, what's in the dow jones i forget what um microsoft and apple is during the dow i forget which ones it were but two companies in the dow can are 40 percent of the weight of the dow right so it was really an indication of four companies to uh, two companies for uh, in large part right but the dow jones went from like twenty nine thousand down to like eighteen thousand, so it dropped 30 percent 
when the pandemic hit. During the same time, the price of comic books, collectibles, only dropped about 10%. So which one is a more stable place to be during a recession, right? Sure, comic book prices could fluctuate a lot as well, and they do individually. You could find amazing deals, as we've seen through our comic book hauls, right? I've bought some comic books that I bought for dirt cheap. There's been comic books that I bought for a dollar that are selling for $50. There's comic books that I bought for $70 that I wouldn't sell for a thousand dollars, right? Take a look at uh, uh, our CGC buy of Mystic Number no. Six with Basil Wolverton. I ended up buying that for eighty dollars all in, including shipping. I would not sell that comic for a thousand dollars right now, right? And I wouldn't have sold it for a thousand dollars then when I bought it. So it really depends on the collectible market, right? Pokemon cards, yeah, they might drop a lot. Pogs. Yeah, sure. There's certain collectibles that collapse. The, uh, what do you call it? Baseball trading cards or trading cards, sports trading cards collapsed. Have they recouped? Not even close. But housing markets can collapse as well. You have to do your own research, Blossom. You have to do your own research. Um, but I agree, there are certain mar markets, industries that will collapse. Knights of Oklahoma, Chicho, what's the usual dollar per share for software companies if they go public? How do I tell if they can dilute my shares? Uh, it, it, you can't put a dollar uh, per share. It's how much are they, um, what's the net worth of the company and how many shares do they have and stuff like this. Look into the contract of the shares you bought, Knights of Oklahoma. Find out if there's a clause there where they can dilute your shares, right? so it's basically market cap of a company that decides so it's not a dollar per share it's the market cap and what they can do is they can say you know if the market cap is a billion dollars and they release you know they say we're going to release a million shares or a hundred well, it won't be a hundred thousand let's say a million shares if they want to be liquid at least a million shares then all you do you take a billion dollars divide by a million shares and that's or yeah divide by a million and that's how much uh the stocks are per share or 10 million shares right so a billion divided by 10 million that means there are 10 million shares that's the price of the stock they might decide to release less stock or more stock but look into the contract find out what the what the mechanics what the what the intricacies of the shares that you hold are and if you need advice if it's worth a lot of money uh, if you need advice find someone that understands can interpret that contract for you if it's not too much money right and you you want to let it ride then let it ride if it's a lot of money then think about this right a purple cow sure you could do much better with your own business but what's the value of your time there what's the downside risk how many startups fail do you have rich family friends to support you in the meantime uh, first of all, you don't need to have rich family friends to support you if you're going to start a business. You could plan ahead and build yourself a buffer and start your business if you want to go all in and quit everything else. Or you could start your business in slow mode while you do something else. Do this as well, right? Start your own business that you want to do. I wanted to have a presence online. In 2005, I started blogging, right? In 2007, I started releasing my first videos. People would tell me, oh, how come you're spending so much time on this? Well, I go, well, because I love what I do, and this is a place I want to be. It's a new industry, and I want to build up my own business here. Oh, you're crazy. You're wasting your time. After a while, after 10 years or whatever it was, eight years, eight years or something, YouTube monetized, allowed monetization of videos. Oh, cool. Now you can get a little bit of revenue. And it was very, very, very little right and it still is very very little but you can diversify you can parlay that right and then you get into a live stream you got multiple streams of revenue so it's not necessary to go all in it's not necessary to have friends and family to support you if you if you're depending if you want to start a business and you're relying on your friends and family to support you until your business takes off you're doing the wrong thing don't start that business you're out of your mind the, 
the probability of your business being successful is almost zero right uh, as far as your time goes if you love what I what you do then you'll spend as much time in it as you like as you want right so it really depends what it is that you're doing your passion for it your love for it if it's part of your hobby if it's if it's something you want to incorporate into your lifestyle or if it's just a burden on you a lot of that stuff has to be taken into consideration elder god armenia needs some beach property <laughs> yeah we're landlocked and that was by design by the way uh by design of powers that landlocked armenia because they wanted that area to be in conflict right lions that really sucks to hear i understand your bias that's fair from what i know i'm pro armenia i'm already anti-turkey <laughs> lions brother uh, erdogan turkey is in trouble and they're lashing out they're basically fighting wars on multiple fronts right now they're fighting a war in syria they're fighting a war in uh, in uh, iraq they're fighting a war in armenia okay they're azerbaijan bombed towns in iran right they actually fired into iranian territory we'll see what what the backlash from that is going to be the powers that be the western powers have been trying to drag iran into a war for a long time now i don't think iran is going to let armenia fail or fall right so this thing might explode huge erdogan was lashing out in libya turkey man if i will if i lived in turkey i'd be very very pissed with that government right now because they brought in fanatics isis armed them they started multiple wars killed countless of their citizens economically collapsed the country the turkish lira has gone from uh, has dropped 85 percent in 10 years right there turkey is in deep shit right that is one of the reasons they're starting so many wars and killing so many people right because economically the country is collapsing one of the last bastions of dictators when their whole country is collapsing their economy is collapsing and people are pissed and they got fanatics in their midst because they allowed them in right is to start wars all over the place and deflect that's what turkey is doing unfortunately they're killing a lot of armenians in the process right f them love and support to the armenian people thanks coolio right don't need to know any of that ba -ba -ba -ba. or target retirement okay i'm scrolling down gangs to see if there's anything directed to chicho coolio uh chicho how often do you sell your comics not often uh we sold last year i believe right we sold some comics before that it was in 2002 that i sold some comics and i regret selling almost all of those comics <laughs> really i even regret selling some of the comics i did last year right some of those comics that i sold last year they've gone up multiple fold we sold venom number three with the first appearance of null right for 80 dollars, and the person tried to scam me right and I disputed it and eBay was found in my favor. We sold that comic. It was a 9.8 condition, right? For $60. That comic right now is selling in that condition for 300 plus dollars. We sold Venom number four, right? For $10. That comic right now is selling for over a hundred, I believe, right? there's other comics that i sold last year i remember when i listed them someone on youtube came out oh you're pricing these comics too high i'm like dude that's my collection it's this is what i'm willing to sell them and some of these things are pretty damn good price i'm selling them to collect data so we can do a little mathematics on them right right now some of those comics are a lot higher than what i sold them for the people who bought them are very very happy some of those people okay good on them fantastic right so to answer your question i went on a little tangent i sold in 2002 i regret selling almost all those comics i sold last year so it was 17 no how many years uh, 17 years basically since i sold and the odds are i'm going to sell some comics 
uh, in the next few months as well I want to raise some money uh, because I need to do an upgrade to my computers and stuff like this so I need to raise a few thousand dollars to do a hardcore upgrade right so this is assets I have that I'm willing to sell to keep my business going and that is what investing in collectibles or stocks or anything means you park your money somewhere hopefully the value of wherever you parked your money goes up and when you need to you liquidate some of those assets to invest somewhere else or in yourself or in your business that's the way personal finance works right what's the main financial demographic of your comic book buyers uh, main financial uh, so uh, I've had resellers buying my comics uh, but all the comics we sold I got scammed three times right one of them I disputed or four times maybe one of them I disputed my favor I, there's no way I was gonna let that guy get away with that without me disputing it right because I knew he was pulling a scam one person pulled a scam saying he never received the book right and I know that was a scam because three days later he said refund me because I haven't got the book I'm like dude it's three days over Christmas what are you nuts <laughs> and then we said wait but I knew he was he wasn't gonna say he got it right uh, a reseller partially scammed me because he said oh this book is this and he took a picture and I said show it out of the bag and he never did and I refunded him half the money and another person I just refunded right uh, it wasn't worth disputing right so it's just business expense right so who are my comic book buyer demographics they're collect there are people who are collecting comic books there are people who love comic books as a hobby uh, there are people who are artists I know one person locally that bought some comic books he was an artist he wanted to have the comic books on his wall and there's resellers that were buying my comics because they were going to resell it right so it's all over the place and fans right fans I know one person I we sold death uh, sandman number eight the first appearance of death and a person that bought that was in the united states and she was she loved the character death and she wanted to have the first appearance of death and she bought that as a fantastic price right i think she bought it for 60 bucks 50 bucks 40 bucks 40 bucks i think right and that comic now is worth over 100 i believe mastaharo i remember hearing somewhere that armenia was a big tech area for the Soviet Union and that has carried on to this day what a with a lot of industry in Armenia being service-based stuff like IT companies is that true I don't think there's that much but Armenia uh, is, is a it is a center for innovation right the MIG Russian MIG is Migoyan as Armenian design Armenian education system this is what an education system should be like mandatory everybody that goes to school in Armenia every kid that goes to school in Armenia has to learn chess right this is a different different than the way people in Azerbaijan and Turkey are growing up right so there's a lot of it's there's a lot of brain power there okay because it has from day one really tried to make sure that uh, one of its biggest resource is its, it's its uh, innovation human knowledge it's not you know it's not heavily populated so they're not raising people to be cannon father they're raising people to be innovators right it's a different game if so do you see a large part of the nation's output being intellectual property as something that is as uh, secure and something that will continue to grow when compared to for example raw resource extraction um i don't know too much about that uh master uh the econo i know armenia is going through some hard economic times over the last few years and it was starting to do better this war is kicking it down right because turkey and azerbaijan do want, do not want to see armenia do better Elegant right. Chicho, we need to arrange a voice chat on Discord about the A versus A uh, war. Yeah, may, maybe Elder Gods, maybe it's it, we can do a live stream. Uh, actually, voice voice uh, voice chat on Discord will work as well. Let me know. I'm willing to do. Uh, 
I'm willing to do. Sure, you can dive deeper if you want, a purple cow, but uh, don't act like that's necessary for people to do well in the stock market or even like it's generally a good idea to do so. Plenty of research shows that people who trade more do worse. Uh, whose research is that? Is that research coming out of uh, the big houses? If you want to make it a casino, you can make it a casino. Indeed, you can make it a casino. I personally like for example when people say oh they own stock they own this they've done well i go oh what have you got you got mining companies you got banking companies your money is invested in the in military industrial complex how have you done more on paper your stock has gone up your freedoms have deteriorated you've been responsible your investments have been responsible for hundreds of thousands of people dying your investments are responsible for your centralized power taxing the living daylights out of you and taking your money and giving it to the military industrial complex right yeah it's you can you can look on paper to see you know if your value has gone up or not but what is the cost of that gain right what is the cost of that gain people don't take these into consideration people say oh we had monsanto stock i go you're an idiot so you're 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 okay buying stock of a company that's poisoning the planet right that's what you're okay with it really depends man it really depends and by the way by the way if you're investing in the stock market the stock market has done this look at the chart of the markets dow s p nasdaq do you really want to be holding do you really want to be holding here are you are you okay with holding here when are you going to cash out right people invest 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 they don't realize that hey maybe you should be pulling some of that money off the table right maybe you should pull that some of that money off the table people invest in the markets right take all their disposable cash and put it in the markets because on paper they look good but their communities are collapsing their children don't get education they can't afford to buy nice healthy organic food because that's too expensive right so they go buy genetically modified hormone bovine induced meat right because the nice organic free range meat that is grown in your local farm is too expensive for you to eat meanwhile every month they give 10 to 20 percent of their money or five percent of their money to the to wall street clowns that's not a good investment just because on paper it looks good damn no man no 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 what is the cost of in your investment hey old friends mr he's like hi how are you doing what is your holy grail as far as comics my holy grail as far as comics the basil wolverton uh, mystic number six the graded one would be one of my holy grails uh, that's the one we bought for 80 dollars that i wouldn't sell for a thousand right now right wow only three times that's great blossom <laughs> on on ebay three times no because <laughs> i i really listed stuff and the comics i was selling they were great comics man and I was really kind and uh, I communicated with everyone. I packaged everything really nicely. Uh, I take pride in what I do, right? I wanted everyone to be happy. I, I, I treated people the way I want to be treated and the way I didn't want to be treated, right? When I, when I get books, packages with comic books, packaged nicely and they're nice, exactly what, I, what, what the description says, I'm happy. I wanted to make sure other people were happy. That's why I know those people that... I had to refund the stuff they were scammers because there's no way that they would have been unhappy with the books as a reseller resellers suck yeah in the sneaker game anyway <laughs> detective 27 is mine oh elder god if you have detective 27 rock and roll man we read that <laughs> we do a comic book reading of detective 27 that's the first appearance of batman for those of you uh that want to know why that's important uh, legendary rock boss if i wanted to win over a beautiful persian woman with cooking what persian dish do you think would do the job it depends on the persian woman uh korma sabzi is a staple per persian dish okay it's like a vegetarian uh it's not vegetarian but lots of greens it's got a little bit of meat and stuff with persian rice dish uh persian dish uh <laughs> 
there, there are some Persian dishes. Uh, what's a, what's a good one that'll win over? Oh, make them. Dude, this is what you got to do. Uh, make them what we did in the last cooking stream that we did two, yesterday. Yesterday we did the cooking. Yesterday we did the cooking stream. No, no, two days ago we did the cooking stream. But the main part of that is the tadik. So cook rice it's just rice really and whatever else you make on the side make it doesn't make a difference whatever stew you make right but the rice make sure you cook it in a way where you have the crispy bread on the bottom of the pan okay so you cook the rice uh, al dante right uh, uh, rinse it right and then take a platter put oil in the bottom i use olive oil but you could use butter as well right and take flatbread persian flatbread put it on the bottom and if you have lamb meat you could do that too but the girl might be vegetarian and then put rice on top close it put it in the oven between 45 minutes to an hour at 420 right and the bottom of the thing will be the bread will become crispy that's called tadik persians kill for that Armenians kill for that too. And yesterday, Elder Cod said he would kill for that. <laughs> what was the cost of that gain? That hit home for me. Jabba, 197. Yeah, people need to take into consideration the cost of that gain, right? Thank God they changed Batman's outfit. Thank God. Preach it, Chicho, Julio says. Preach it, Mr. <laughs> Preach it, Mr. He's, Mr. He's a guy. A purple cow chicho there are socially responsible funds for example uh by the way uh purple cow you can't post links only me and mods can post links but the socially responsible funds yes they exist they came into being i've been tracking i was tracking some of them a few years ago i haven't been tracking any of them recently but majority of the socially responsible funds that i saw no longer exist because they were losing money right because socially responsible funds goes against what the first doctrine of wall street is which is increasing shareholder value right but i agree with you there should be socially responsible funds and they should get more money going into them maybe an after stream discord chat about a twitch stream elder god mastaharo what do you think is a smart investment for someone younger to be making for long-term growth maybe something to put a bit of money in every week month so it can bolster retirement fund a bit later down the track uh master Haro, look there are companies on wall street in the stock market which are good companies which do actually give you that actually have a yield that possibly could have a good upside personally for me the ones i've been looking at are some of the cannabis companies right because the cannabis industry is in its infancy okay it really the cannabis industry is in its infancy it has a lot more room to grow we're talking decades of room to grow do some research find some companies whose business model you agree with whose management you have faith in right who listen to their uh what do you call it uh, their quarterly and yearly uh conferences that they have investor conferences that they have and they they if they're on the stock market they have to broadcast uh, that live right or they have to have it available for you to listen to you can listen to them and if you agree with their model take a look at their charts personally if i was going to step back into the markets there's some cannabis companies that I, I, i've been looking at one of them was there's two of them that are in in my part of the world one of them is a cannabis uh a cannabis company that uh produces cigarettes but no tobacco with cannabis their stock was uh five months ago was 62 cents it did a pop it peaked at three dollars right now sitting at two dollars right so that was like a five banger in a matter of four or five months right there's another one that provides cannabis that dropped down to 250 now it's sitting around six dollars and even at six dollars is still a good it's still a good buy possibly right there's other things involved with it so look into the field that you're comfortable being in that doesn't doesn't compromise your ethics right 
because if you're going to park it for a long time you want to use it at your retirement make sure it's not something that goes against your ethical nature right because you have to live with that there are old folks homes places that uh, have uh, REITs that you can investment that give you a yield right um, there's there's a few places right and those ones I don't know if they're I track some of them right sag bonus hey chicho do you upload the stream on youtube too or just cooking stuff i i'm gonna upload this on youtube as well the only one right now that we're not uploading to youtube is the current events politics streams even though we've talked a little bit about politics right now hopefully the, the algorithms are going to avoid that right the sensors are going to avoid that so personal finance goes on youtube as well so right now it's entheogens is not going to go on youtube i don't think so no it's not going to go on youtube we only loaded one entheogen stream on youtube we've done two more since the first one we did and those are on bitshoot and we're going to do one tomorrow on entheogens and that's not going to be loaded on youtube so current events politics and entheogens don't go on youtube they go on bitshoot and at some point we might might even Re reduce what we're putting on YouTube just because the sensors might be clamping and tighter and tighter, right? The Julian Assange streams we're going to do next week, two of them, they will go on YouTube. Okay. Hi, Chicho from Sweden. How are you? Doing well, Sweden. How are you doing? What's your real name, by the way? Chicho. I'm a Chicho Chicho. <laughs> okay, thanks. Legendary Rob Boss. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Uh, coolio have to keep our online privacy where we can especially people like chicho who have bigger follower tiger codes what are your thoughts on investing apps like robin hood i've been getting a little bit into it i i've seen a couple of them i actually have one of those online uh, investing apps uh, contact me uh, asking me to uh, promote their stuff to and they would give me money right i think they said they would give me 500 dollars per video that i put out that i had a little selling their app and stuff promoting their app saying oh, i use this app and they were giving me stock and they, they you know they offer some kickback to me for me to promote their app right i wasn't into it uh and i haven't played around with investing apps but investing apps the sh you know they are a thing they should be legit just make sure uh, they're a good one that you're using and stay active and don't don't put all your eggs in one basket okay don't put all your eggs in one basket very important somewhere i saw a picture of a persian food with a rectangular plane with something underneath and some grated cheese or something on top do you recall what that was triangular something underneath with grated cheese on top i might have been on discord grated cheese on top on our on our discord uh blossom how often do i stream king boxer um we got i've been streaming every day for the last week i think and we got another uh six streams to go in the next seven days i think <laughs> and i do i announce in sets so as far as your I, I don't set up a regular schedule because uh i adjust my time according to my partner she does shift work but basically i announce minimum two sets of live streams a month and each set is anywhere between six to or let's say five to ten uh live streams at a time so i'm streaming anywhere between 10 15 to 20 10 to 20 days a month at least all right how often do you get sponsorship offers uh, as a youtuber would you ever consider doing one or no uh, i've had offers before and i i haven't accepted any of them yet um i i don't know if i ever will it's got to be something that i fully support it's got to be something that i use right uh like for example if valiant comics contacted me and said chicho will will pay you if you do a sponsorship you know sponsorship valiant comics i go hell yeah 
<laughs> Why not? I buy Valiant Comics. It's the only company that I buy all of their comics, right? I would do it. I would also do it for some of the other independent comic book co companies as well, right? Because I buy their comic books. I love them, right? So it would really have to be something that my heart is in it. Uh, but I haven't... I've been offered for the last, I don't know, 14 years that I've been, let's say 10 years, at least 10 years, 12 years that I've been loading on YouTube. Uh, I haven't accepted one yet. I had one offer once back in 2008 where a company in California offered to pay me a few thousand dollars to go down to California and create a math series for them because they saw the math content I was putting out. Uh, I declined. I declined. I had a company... Uh, HNC, the main one of the the main uh, Japanese television company. I had one of their directors that makes um, documentary films fly to Vancouver, and the representative from New York fly to Vancouver to meet with me because they were making a documentary about mathematics, and they wanted to use me as the presenter to do mathematics graffiti style on the on the walls that I was doing so I spent the day showing the walls and stuff like that it was cool I didn't it didn't go through yeah I think it was on the Chicho discord just a few shaved pieces of cheese on top of uh, unmelted I don't know I don't know if that was me was that me blossom if you find it uh, let us know I don't know which one it is I checked the pics on Discord, but I don't remember seeing something like that. Cheese. Are you sure it was cheese? It was just recently? If that was it, that might have been the Tadik uh, that I made. I haven't munched on the autumn olives yet. Autumn olives. It's not going to focus. Super delicious. Check it out. Right. look at that thing what a cool fruit what a cool fruit All right. what a cool fruit fantastic berry it's addictive It's called autumn olives. They don't taste like olives at all. They're more berries, right? Very tasty. Incredibly tasty. Okay, Blossom, thank you. What is the cool fruit? Oh, yeah, it comes out in the all, uh, autumn and most autumn fruit and vegetables are powerful. They're like they contain because they have to see you through the winter. So they contain a lot of nutrients. Coolio Chicho, if each of your fruit liqueurs was its own company, which one would you invest in the most? Strawberry. Because strawberry, everybody would eat. <laughs> Or drink. Leaf blower. I will make it my mission to try these. Uh, Bitstorm, try them. It, they're really good. King Boxer, I'm 19 years old. I know the system is messed up, but I don't completely understand why. I lack knowledge and want to change it. Can you recommend a good book to get started? Uh, regarding the economy or regarding the system? If you want to know, delve deep into how messed up the system is in the United States specifically. I've recommended this before. Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt by Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco. I don't know if th this does provide some solutions, um, but it's more about the problems, right? So this is a great book. Gore, here, let me put this here. 
Gore Vidal's Perpetual War for Perpetual Peace. Okay. This is a great book as well. Short book, small book. Um, it's about uh, Timothy, Timothy McVeigh sort of focuses on that. Talk about the Oklahoma City bombing, how we got to be so hated. Gore Vidal, Perpetual Peace for Perpetual War. <laughs> Does it offer solutions? Yeah. Um, to a certain degree, it's about uh, non-interventionalism, right? Uh, as far as solutions specifically, oh, uh, solutions. Um, Krishna Mortis, and it's a free book you can read online. Krishna Mortis, Education and the Significance of Life, mandatory reading. Okay. Krishna Morty is the author, and the book is called Education and the Significance of <coughs> Significance of Life. And we have a video out where we talked about it and we read excerpts of it. Okay, if you do if you do Chicho, education and the significance of life, um, it should pop up. And in the link of that description, um, in the link of that video, uh, in the in the description of that video, there's a link that'll take you to the book that you can read it online. Okay, should I invest in Tesla stock? No. Miro, Tesla is a is a war company now. Okay, uh, Elon Musk can go f himself, right? He he tweeted out uh, when the coup happened in Bolivia that they they're allowed to uh, the U.S. is allowed to coup anyone they want because he wanted their lithium, right? Uh, Tesla stock is so so expensive right his spacex he you know he he said uh as a um diamond mine uh, blossom he he tweeted out that he could deliver u.s military weapons anywhere around the globe within 15 minutes alan musk is a he he's on the same level as steve jobs and uh bill gates and jeff bezos i wouldn't invest in tesla stock personally even though i owned or I was managing someone's um, funds when Tesla stock before the five for one split bought into it at twenty five dollars would have been five dollars right now, right? So according to today's price, bought into Tesla stock back in two thousand eleven at five dollars. Right now, sitting at four hundred thirty dollars or so, right? Thank you. I'm from Scotland, by the way. Awesome, King Boxer. I hope you enjoy the book, by the way, King Boxer. Okay. Uh, start with Krishnamurti and the Significance of Life. Okay. Very important book. Very important book. <clears throat> by the way, gang, I'm going to release the cooking video after this live stream. Okay. The, cook, um, the cooking live stream we did a couple of days ago uh, where we cook up uh, lentil, Persian lentil, rice dish with lamb and the crispy bread in the bottom right and with a little paste of dates raisins and cinnamon and onions fried up right super delicious super delicious delicious chicho what's your favorite turkish dish turkish dish uh turkey is an implant in that region right <laughs> pumpkin now that we're talking about it uh, turkish are uh, Turkey are descendants of Mongols. So Turkey it is basically has taken fruits and uh, foods and stuff like this from other cultures and made it its, its own, right? Which is a legit thing to do. As far as what, what my favorite Turkish dish is, I, I don't. I like Turkish coffee with a little bit of baklava and stuff like this. Um, one of actually one uh, I learned one type of food to eat with. Uh, uh, from uh, Turkish friends and stuff we had was uh, tahini with uh, honey is really good tahini and honey is really good you mix it up I've shown that you take tahini mix a uh, honey into it and it becomes really nice to eat um, I, I don't know what else it's, it's sort of a mix as Persian food mainly that I uh, that I, I know and Persian food has been around a lot longer than Turkish food. Uh, 
Persia was has was a country way before Turkey was was even there, right? So, a Turkey is just taking foods from other cultures. Turkish pizza is nice. <laughs> Turkish pizza. I don't know what Turkish. Oh, you're talking lamajun. Lamajun is nice, but that's more Arabic. Lamajun. You're, are you talking about the really flat, thin pizza with yeah, yeah, yeah? That's lamajun. That's not Turkish. That's Arabic. But you can call it Turkish, right? Because they take it and change the name, and they say it's Turkish now, right? Cheryl, yes, you have shown tahini and honey, and now I'm hooked. Oh, really, Cheryl? You incorporated it. Nice, super delicious. Yeah, super good. Thank you for opening doors. That looks like a ship. Heard about uh, Tantuni. 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 I don't know what Tantuni is, pumpkin. Tahini, not Tahiti. Tahini, not Tahiti. <laughs> oh, did you put Tahiti? Oh, yeah, Tahiti. Tahiti and honey. Hmm, I wonder what that would be like, Cheryl. Uh, I don't know what Tantuni is. I don't know what Tantuni is. I, I might know it as something else, some other name. I mean, I, we have I have family members that speak Turkish. My father is fluent in Turkish, right? Um, it like nothing against Turkish people, Turkish language, Turkish culture, but Turkish dictatorships, totalitarianism, governments where they wage war around the, around their vicinity and kill tens of thousands of people, f them, right? F them. Gang, we're almost coming up to two hours. We're almost coming up to two hours. Chicho, do you speak Arabic? No, no, I don't speak Arabic. I speak uh, Farsi, Persian, but very broken. My vocabulary is very limited. Pumpkin, it's like meat and vegetables and bread, and you roll it. Meat and, yeah, that could be many things, many things, pumpkin. But that sounds delicious. I've had versions of that type of food uh, uh, from Iran, from Arab, and probably Turkish because of, you know, we have friends and family that are from Turkey. Tatuni. Oh, I know that name. Tatuni. Blossom. Tatuni. Tuin. Tatuin. I, I would have to see it. I would have to see it. Gang, if it's not a Persian name, I would have to see it. Persian or Armenian name, I would... I should probably know what it is, but uh, I would have to see it. I will not be subject to criminal abuse. I'll look out as to I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, funny, funny. Gang, should we call the stream? Nice personal finance discussion, investment uh, discussion. Uh, and we did a little bit of politics. The planet of Tatooine is a Star Wars, isn't it? play at martin how are you doing welcome welcome gang thank you for being here mods thank you for taking care of business if you're around turkish poached eggs on yogurt with alapo pepper sauce is phenomenal i don't think i've tried i don't think i've tried that sounds delicious just fine thanks for the stream my pleasure my pleasure dang i just came oh no miro miro you were here earlier oh it's okay we're gonna be on again tomorrow with an entheogen stream thursday with uh math stream friday we do comic book reading for halloween saturday we do a comic book reading for halloween i believe i got the dates right yeah saturday and then on monday and tuesday we do julian assange streams free your mouth from its bonds and free julian assange <laughs> nice <laughs> i was lurking but i've only been here for like that oh no miro sorry well we're gonna be i got five more streams coming up right one two three six more streams coming up in the next seven days mushrooms for halloween <laughs> i can't wait for entheogen tomorrow tomorrow we do tomorrow we do gang thank you for everything thank you for the discussions i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to support this work if you want to follow this work patreon is a fantastic way to do so i don't put anything beyond paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike you can follow the work and if you think 
you have the means to support this work and you like the content here supporting this work through patreon is a fantastic way to make sure we continue to do what it is that we are doing and for those of you who've been supporting this work through patreon thank you for the support gang very much appreciate it we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho lives h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e mods thank you for taking care of business gang thank you for the follows thank you for the subs thank you for the cheers thank you for the discussions and thank you for being here okay i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on lo minds vk parlor gap and twitter okay and you can follow the work there you can go to our chat on our twitch and put in an exclamation mark social and all the links will pop up and we do have a discord page and the links are in the description of this video and on the live stream and on our twitch page you should be able to find it and uh, there's some amazing discussion being taking place on uh, discord and a lot of great info and just everything being shared on our discord page so you're definitely welcome to come there and uh, share your thoughts and share your ideas we will be uploading the audio of this discussion to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o as a podcast and it should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and we will be uploading this video this live stream to both BitChute and youtube and you can support this work by subscribing following turning on notifications sharing liking commenting and if you're on youtube you can join youtube membership and for those of you who've joined youtube membership thank you very much for the support gang thanks for being here i've been listening to your podcast on soundcloud this is the first live stream awesome king boxer i'll have the the politics one up tomorrow or the next day and then this one will be up in about four days or so okay uh, when the videos come up i released the podcast at the same time i released uh bit shoot videos bit shooting youtube videos so i'll have that up as well i'm glad you guys are enjoying the content gang if you can make it tomorrow and theogens i hope you have a fantastic tuesday gang bye everyone